Emil is a drug addict who's spent every penny on drugs and games. On top of that, the money he's taken from the loan shark is also exhausted on the same things, but still, he couldn't recover it to pay it back. Therefore, the loan shark cut off his pinky finger and warned him to prepare half a million the next day. There's no way Emil can manage such a large amount within a day. So, feeling dejected, he goes back to his cousin's room where he's been staying for the time being. As soon as he gets back home, Emil takes out a gun and contemplates pulling the trigger to kill himself. Meanwhile, in the adjacent room, his cousin Telly and his friend Dusty are relishing inhaling some narcotics. Emil overhears Dusty talking about his plan to rob a bank. After being released from prison, Dusty learns from his former cellmate's wife about a significant amount of money that's scheduled to be transported in a convoy to the bank in his gesh on Tuesday morning. He asks Telly if he's in for the robbery. Just then, Emil comes before them and claims that he's also ready to take part in this heist. Dusty right away rejects Emil's involvement, saying that he's incompetent. However, seeing how desperate he is, the big guys take him in. The next day, Tuesday, they all nervously sit in the van waiting for the convoy's arrival. Telly just wants to make sure that the convoy's coming today, but to his dismay, Dusty tells them that the convoy is coming to the bank at 9.30 Monday. Now, Dusty and Telly get into a dispute, and Telly almost gives up on it. However, Emil tells them that they can't back down now, that they're right in front of the bank. He wishes to execute the robbery as planned. So, Emil and Dusty enter the bank, whereas Telly remains behind the van. Both the boys are drug addicts and clearly lack the experience of robbing. Nevertheless, Telly gives up and makes a retreat as soon as he steps in. But the same is not the case for Emil, because he needs to manage a half a million dollars to pay back to the loan shark. He gathers his courage and asks the lady at the counter for the money. A while later, Emil comes back to the van with $2 million in a shopping caddy borrowed from a customer in the bank. As they're driving, Emil is angry with Dusty for abandoning him. And on top of that, he's stressed out because he accidentally shot a person earlier in the bank vault. He thinks that the man is dead now. Dusty tells him that there's a high chance for that person to survive if he'd been shot in the back or the stomach, but if it's in the head, he'd die on the spot. After a long drive, they arrive at a deserted area by the dam, having prepared an additional getaway car to evade capture. Despite Dusty abandoning a meal in the bank, he shamelessly demands the money, stating that it was his idea. Telly scolds him for getting the date wrong and leaving a meal behind to kill a guy. This anchors Dusty, which leads him to point the gun at Telly, who then requests Emil to back him up. Now, a barrage of bullets fills the air from both Dusty and Emil's firearms. Many bullets have been lunged into Telly's body, whereas Emil has taken advice from them and shoots him in the head, killing him on the spot. Telly's still breathing and asks Emil to take him to the hospital, but unfortunately, Emil shoots him in the head and flees. He stops by a gas station and parks next to the car, which is of the same model as his own. This car belongs to Leon Perkowski, a widower and the father of teenage daughter Dianka. They share their ride with two other strangers, namely Clara and Wojtek, who are on their way back to the Czech Republic. Dianka is a troublesome child who almost ends up in the juvenile correctional facility. Before they leave for the Czech Republic, she tells Leon that she's three months pregnant when he'd scolded her to behave properly. Talking about the new passengers, Clara has recently ended her relationship with her fiancé and is going to her sister's house in the Czech Republic. While Wojtek is going to meet a girl who he'd met through the dating app, he regrets standing her up in the past when she'd come to visit him. Wojtek is also having a mummy issue, where his mother gets so involved in his life, especially his love life. While Leon makes a stop at the gas station, Dianka steals the car key from his pocket, and just when she's about to sneak out of the store, she bumps into a meal and gets their keys swapped. Without the slightest clue about getting the cars mixed, she gets into the wrong car and drives around the parking lot. Leon has to yank her out when the other passengers return to the car. Meanwhile, Clara says that she no longer needs to go to the Czech Republic and demands to be dropped off at the nearest station. On their way, the passengers realize their stuff is missing and that it's not their car. Leon notices the sticky steering wheel and finds a gun in the door compartment, but chooses not to mention it to the passengers. Instead of going to the nearest station, Leon takes them somewhere else. He stops the car in the woods and checks the car trunk, only to find a bag full of money. He immediately pockets a few bundles, and while he steps out, Dianka stirs up trouble by telling the passengers that this whole car swap thing is her father's plan and that they're in danger. Now, when Leon returns to the driver's seat, Wojtek runs away from him, and after chasing him down, he has no option but to tell the truth. A few moments later, Dianka gets a call from Leon's phone. Despite Leon stopping her to answer the phone, she picks up the call and even tells Emil about their location. 
While chasing after her, the phone falls and breaks down. Now, Leon loses control and takes the gun out of the car and shows it to them, along with the money from the heist. He believes that the car belongs to some bank robber. But just then, the bypasser Celine overhears them. Apparently, Celine is a local prostitute who's roaming around in search of a client. Next, everyone calms down as Leon tells them that they need to hide in the woods when the robber arrives to get back his car. Since he can't drive both cars at the same time, they take the opportunity to escape in his own car. However, Clara refuses to leave empty-handed. She points out that all of them are in need of that money. Meanwhile, Emil goes back to the gas station to get some tools that might come in handy while dealing with the one who stole his car. At the same time, a group of athletes comes into the store. Emil then sneaks into their tour bus and finds a baseball bat. He's then discovered by three men who've just returned to the bus. But Emil quickly takes care of them with that same bat. When he's just about to get off the bus, he also finds a sturdy sword. Back in the woods, the huge sum of money has been causing disputes among the group. Celine reminds them that Dianca has seen the face of the robber, so he'd come back to haunt each one of them, even if they're willing to give him the money back. So she asks them for $70,000, and in exchange then, she'd help them finish the robber off. Eventually, they make a deal with Celine that she'd stay by the car to approach the robber, and only after confirming that he's unarmed, she'd lead him to them. Watchtech is doubtful of Celine's words and warns the others of it as they walk deeper into the woods. Just then, Leon transfers the money into a garbage bag and tells Dianca to hide it. They come up with a plan to lure the robber with the bag and get him. However, Watchtech leaves, saying he has no interest in the money. And the remaining two are also in conflict as Clara makes the allegation that it's Leon and Dianca who plan to get the money and the gun. So he walks away from her. Back in the parking lot, Celine approaches Emile and tries to make a deal with him. However, it miserably backfires when he holds her onto the sword point and makes her lead the way to them. When they see Clara alone, Celine bites Emile's hand and frees herself. She then goes to Dianca and takes all the money from the girl. Meanwhile, Clara and Emile stand against each other, one holding a gun while the other with a sword. Fortunately, Watchtech returns back in the nick of time and saves Clara from Emile. He hits Emile's head with the heel of the sword several times, making him collapse on the ground. Now, all four people have gathered around Emile's body. Watchtech is nervous about killing a man, so he calls the police to surrender. But before he can say anything, Leon cuts off the call. Night falls, and they still haven't done anything about Emile's body. And, well, the man that they've supposed to be dead slowly rises in the dark. Dianca sincerely apologizes to him and tells Emile that Celine has already taken away his money. She asks him for their car key, and surprisingly, Emile gives it to them and follows them to the parking lot. But once they drive off, Emile realizes that he's forgotten to retrieve back his own car key. He then watches some videos online and manages to start the car without the keys. Meanwhile, the group of four decides to stay in the hotel for the night, and somehow they end up in the same hotel where Celine is staying. We see that Celine is sleeping in the pile of money, making her wildest dream come true. After keeping aside the $70,000, Celine hides the remaining money in the wall behind the decorative ply. She then calls her boyfriend Adrian, who works as an agent in the same line of work as hers. She's madly in love with him, but the same can't be said for Adrian. Once in the past, she'd expressed spending her life with him in Porto Vallarta and inquires about the money they'd require to do so. In response, Adrian told her that they'd need 70 grand. As soon as Adrian comes, he warns her that she better have a good reason for calling him in the duty hour. Celine tells him that she has a gift for him and hands over a watch. Seeing the watch, he gets angry and throws it. She then pulls off the cover and reveals the money spread on her bed. Celine tells him that it's exactly the same amount that they need to go to Porto Vallarta. But when Adrian asks her how she got that money, Celine lies and tells him that she found it in the forest. However, her lie isn't believable and Adrian's abusive side surfaces. Meanwhile, all the noise coming from Celine's room disturbs Watchtech, who's staying right beside her room. He goes to check on the room next door, and Adrian opens the door. Watchtech tells him that he's heard some shouting and asks if someone needs help, but Adrian tells him that he's watching a movie and offers to turn down the volume and shuts the door in his face. Later, Celine asks him if he's heard about the bank robbery. Yes, Adrian had already heard the news, and he also knows that the robbery includes $2 million. He asks her where the remaining money is. Celine tells him that the other party has the remaining money and that they're going to wait in the woods till the next morning. She wants to send Adrian to the woods alone, but he tells her to get ready to head out together. Meanwhile, the other people also settle down in their own respective rooms. Clara gets a call from her sister asking her if something's gone wrong which affected her arrival and season. 
She slowly opens up about what had happened that day. Eventually, she tells her sister about Dianca and her father forcing her to abort the baby in her womb. Leaving Dianca alone in the room, Leon goes to the bar for a drink. Later, he is joined by Wanchtek. Wanchtek is stressed about Madzia, the girl he's going to meet in season, as she might find out that he's been making a fake personality of himself. Leon encourages him to call her right now and tell her the truth. Furthermore, Wanchtek also advises Leon that he should also have a proper conversation with his daughter. The excited Wanchtek then spills the drink all over him. Meanwhile, Clara can't get her mind off Dianca. So, she goes to visit Dianca and asks if her father has ever hit her. After confirming with her that he has hit her in the past, Clara calls her friend who works in social services and explains that an abusive alcoholic father is forcing his daughter to have an abortion. But the person from social services briefs Clara that she needs the man's full name and address to proceed with the case. Now, to find it, Clara goes to the bar and sees his jacket left on the counter. She then takes out his wallet and gets all the information she requires. After that, she even finds a few bundles of cash hidden in his jacket. Without much thought, she takes the cash and hides it in her underwear. When Leon returns back from the washroom, he sees that his jacket's been emptied. Wajtek is nowhere to be seen, and Leon notices the message from Madzia about booking a hotel with a spa. With the limited information he has, Leon suspects that Wajtek has stolen his money. However, as Celine is about to sneak out of the room, Wajtek comes knocking on her door. She gets scared to see him in front of her door. Before Adrian could see him, she tells him to leave quickly. Anyway, Adrian comes out of the washroom and sees the next door neighbor bothering his girlfriend. As a warning, he slits a little on Wajtek's forehead and punches him. Then, the couple leaves for the woods. Just a couple of minutes earlier, when Dianca is passing her time on the balcony, she's seen Celine on the balcony of the room two doors away. She calls her father, telling him that she has something important to tell him. But Leon himself is troubled with his money stolen. So he tells her now's not the time for it and cuts off the call upon seeing Wajtek in the passageway. As soon as Wajtek sees him, he enters his room and locks the door. Leon tells him that they can make a deal and split the money 50-50. Just then, Clara comes and asks what money he's talking about. Leon gets flustered and tells him that Wajtek wanted to pay him back the money for the dinner. The chaos in the hallway causes Dianca to come out as well. But just then, she notices the blood on the doorknob. And on top of that, Leon's hand has traces of blood from holding that doorknob. However, they suspect that Leon has hurt Wajtek. While Claire is banging on the door for it to be opened, Dianca climbs over the balcony and comes across Wojtek's balcony. He eventually lets her come in, and then she opens the door for Clara and Leon. Now, Clara helps Wojtek to clean up his wound. He tells them that he saw Celine a few minutes ago, but Clara explodes at Leon, thinking he's beaten Wojtek and forced him to lie. She believes that Leon's planning to capture the money for himself and Dianca. On the other hand, Leon still thinks that Wojtek has his money, so he tells Clara that he plans to split the money with him. This makes Clara so furious that she takes the hidden money out of her underwear. She then proceeds to record a voice message to be sent to her friend, reporting Leon for abuse. Meanwhile, Wojtek packs his bag and decides to leave. But Leon puts the blame on Wojtek, as he's the first one to pretend to have seen Celine, and also the first one to walk away. Not caring about the ongoing drama, Dianca goes to the adjacent room. The remaining three people also follow her there. She shows Clara and Leon Celine's clothes, which proves that Celine has been staying in that room. Dianca tells them that the money's hidden in the room. Now, Leon orders her to stay in her room and asks Wojtek to watch over her. On the other hand, Clara gives Leon 10 minutes to search for the money, or else she'll send the message to social services. A while earlier, when Celine and Adrian are about to leave, she sees that Emil has also found his way to the hotel. After a drive, they reach the woods, and she leads the way. She knows that Adrian will not let her go alive if he can't find the money. So Celine spreads the money from her bag to the ground to buy her time to run away. However, that proves to be pointless, and Adrian quickly catches up with her after collecting the money. As Adrian is strangling her, Celine tells them that the people who have the remaining money are in the hotel. She somehow convinces them that the only reason they're in the woods is because Celine wanted to make sure Adrian was safe from the murderous freaks. Now, Celine begins to describe the group members, but with a little twisting. She tells Adrian that Wojtek is a muscular man who does the group's dirty work. Then there's Clara and Leon, a married couple with a psycho husband and a calculative wife. She then describes Dianca as the mastermind behind the group who looks like a teenager, but is almost 30 years old. Celine also tells him about Emil, who wears a puffer jacket covered in blood, and he might be a brother to Leon. And with this information, they get on the bike to return back to the hotel. 
Meanwhile, in the hotel, while the four people are in utter chaos, Emil has already entered their floor through the emergency outdoor stairs. Somehow, Dianca tricks Wojtek and locks him in the washroom, and after grabbing some money, Dianca leaves the room. And then, in comes Emil. He ransacks the room, searching for money. Just then, Wojtek blabbers that he could have killed the robber if he wanted to, and tells her that she better let him out immediately. Meanwhile, Emil hears him spewing nonsense and lets him out. But as soon as Wojtek comes out, Emil knocks him out. Even after searching for the whole 10 minutes, Leon could not find the money in the room. He gives up and tells Claire that she can report him and that he doesn't care anymore. But he tells her, know that he cares about his daughter more than anything in the world. Clara tells him that if he doesn't have the money, and if the money's not in Celine's room, then Dianca definitely has it. Unfortunately, Emil overhears their entire conversation. Immediately after returning to the hotel, Adrian checks on the register at the reception and notices that instead of Clara and Leon, who are supposedly married, Leon and Dianca share the same surname. Meanwhile, Celine sees Dianca in the bar, spending money. Adrian approaches her and begins treating her nicely, whereas Celine goes to her room. After spending a few moments together, Adrian asks Dianca if she'd like to see his bike. While she follows him, Adrian covers her mouth and takes her to a soundproof basement room. However, they haven't noticed that Emil has been following them. Hearing someone approaching, Clara and Leon quickly hide under the bed. Seeing that her room has been turned upside down, Celine's first priority goes to check the hidden cash. She takes out all the money and is about to leave, just when Clara and Leon come out from under the bed, pointing the gun at her. Now, Celine warns that Adrian has got Dianca and they have to hurry. Just then, Wojtek comes and tells them that Dianca is missing. At the same time, Leon gets a video of tied up Dianca, demanding the money to be dumped in the garbage bin within five minutes and to send a photo as proof. Next, Leon goes to dump the money as instructed, but Celine tries to convince them that they can work together to take Adrian down. She tells them that she knows about the basement room where Dianca is being held. As time is running out, Emil barges into the room and fights with Adrian. However, it only ends with Adrian brutally stabbing him to death. By then, Celine brings all the people there. She then takes the gun out of Leon's hand and fatally shoots at Adrian. Eventually, Leon rescues Dianca and they burn Emile's car along with the heist money. Also, Dianca finally admits to lying about being pregnant and they continue their drive to season. On their way, they hear the news about finding a burning car and banknote. On top of that, two bodies have also been found in a nearby hotel. The media has concluded it to be linked to the previous day's bank robbery. Finally, the group reaches season and they go their separate ways. Clara reunites with her sister whereas Wojtek's date doesn't go as planned, but it's only a matter of time before he finds a real one. And at last, Leon gives a brand new phone to Dianca as her birthday gift. 